Some of my favorite foods personally is um, veggie burgers, avocado and tomato hummus, spinach sandwiches. Those are really good. Um, pasta and salads, of course. Um, and also, I feel like everybody just sees a vegan as someone who just eats salads all the time, but it's not. There's so many different foods out there. Birthday parties and school lunches and how both of you navigate sending your kids out to these different events and like specifically too, I think would be helpful for parents out there of like specifically what you might give your kids to bring to those instances where they're out in the world and you might not have as much control. When we did make this switch about five years ago, um, along shortly after it, we, Maddie had her own backpack and she, every time we leave the house, she'd make sure she refilled her water bottle. So she'd always have her water bottle and all her snacks. And usually it would be a bunch of carrot sticks, a bunch of celery, sticks she loves her granola bars um and just like some little nashi things that no matter where we are you know you quick wash your hands and go ahead and eat snacks so um, that's sort of just been always our go-to like before we leave the house make sure you get your backpack you know her little now it's a little cuter purse but <laughs> um just to make sure that she's always got options because it, it is a separating feeling when you're hungry and you know that there's nothing there. So I never wanted to put her in a situation where I'm hungry and I don't have any options. When William was in daycare, there was a Chick-fil-A day that the uh, daycare sponsored for the kids. And so it would be on those days where I would send like a guardian chicken tender or something so that he saw like, oh, I can eat it too. Um, but I also made it very clear like, don't trade with your friend because it's not going to be the same thing. Um, but stuff like that, we would try to like imitate. We've gotten away from that um, just because it's, it's less noticeable because kids eat such a variety in, you know, school lunches. Now there's <clears throat> just much more options and he's a bit older um, birthday parties. So um, I remember one of the, one of the first birthday parties he was invited to was at a Chuck E. Cheese. And I couldn't even believe that these places still existed, to be honest with you. I hadn't been to Chuck E. Cheese in, you know, a long time. And um, no vegan option to be found per the Chuck E. Cheese website. So I was like, okay, um, I didn't want to bring a whole thing. And, and so I turned it into maybe something a little more special. And, and this is very much like kid dependent. This works for William. But I told him the day before the party, I said, we're going to go, we're going to play games. You're going to see your friend for their birthday. I said, we're going to leave and we're going to go get our own special lunch. And he was like, okay, cool, you know? And so I knew I would end up taking him to one of our favorite vegan places and then he could get whatever he wanted there. And so again, it is totally different for all kids, but William does very well when I sort of give him that expectation. And so he knew, even though we hung out at Chuck E. Cheese and he played all the games, he wasn't like, oh shoot, they're all eating pizza. And now you know, we're not, because he knew like that was what the plan was gonna be. I definitely held my breath and I thought, oh gosh, are we gonna have some sort of a meltdown here. And then I would be mortified in front of all these parents and they'd all be like that vegan mom is so mean to her kid. Like I had all of those internal thoughts. Um, but it was by the time they got to singing and getting the cupcakes out, we just walked out. We were just like, thanks for having us. And, you know, at that point, most of the kids had dispersed anyway. So it wasn't even a big deal. And it goes back to that other question about worrying if your kids are going to say something, it's so much our stress and worry. It, the kid, they don't care. They're like, whatever, just feed me, whatever. Um, very similar to what Kate said. We always have, like, this is like parent 101. You always have a snack in your bag. You don't leave your house without something for somebody to eat because 10 minutes out the door, they're going to be hungry. So same thing. We always have our water bottle. We always have some sort of something to snack on. Um, and then family gatherings, same sort of thing. I often host. And so I don't have to worry. Um, you know, obviously if I'm making all the food, if we're going somewhere, I'll usually just reach out to the host what can I bring? What are you serving? I want to offer to bring something. Um, if we are going to a restaurant, I can usually just call ahead or check the menu, just make sure that there's an option. Um, it takes like five minutes and just to make sure. And then it avoids that sort of awkward, oh, it must be so difficult for you to go anywhere conversation. Nope, it's actually totally fine. And we've got our meal. Um, so yeah, that's kind of how we handle all those things. I do that with my adult friends. I always have a snack in my bag because <laughs> I'm like, I don't want to deal with your hungry butt later. <laughs> so Kate, for any parents that are thinking about adding more plant-based choices to their life, but they don't cook or they hate to cook or they're working 80 hours a week, do you have any advice for those folks who that's a real barrier for them? 
There are definitely a lot of like real quick ones, real quick meals. Um, off the top of my head, pasta, right? We always have pasta and a jar of sauce or a frozen container of sauce that I've made from a couple weeks ago in the freezer. So that's always a really easy go-to for me. Um, we've also been on uh, a big chickpea salad kick lately. So if you just smash up chickpeas and you can mix it with some vegan mayo and some lettuce and onions, I'm sorry, celery and onions, it tastes just like tuna fish. I remember tuna fish tasting like um so some of the quicker meals like that tend to be really wonderful for those busy evenings where you have a bunch of things going on or you got to run one of your kiddos to soccer and somebody else to the swimming pool and what kind of advice would you have for parents that are just don't even know how to find time to use the bathroom let alone cut carrot sticks yeah all been there um no that's a great question um yeah I think to be honest with you for me it was um figure out what your kids want to eat. Stop trying to convince them of things that you think they want to eat. Find what they like and stick with that. You know, um, it's always fun to try new things, but on the flip side, if you know your kids love chickpea salad and they want to eat it a couple days in a row, then, Hey, we're having chickpea salad three days in a row. That's cool. I've eaten the same thing three days in a row. I mean, probably more so. So sort of take that stress off that every night needs to be this like brand new invention of a meal. Just eat what you know your family's gonna enjoy. Um, for me, I pack both lunches. So both the kids take a lunch, uh, whether it's to preschool or elementary school and start to finish that is a 15 minute process tops. Because like Kate just said, pre-chopping your vegetables. Um, my sort of, I don't know if I'd call it like a hack, but you can get the bagged carrots that are like chips just a time, just save me that couple extra minutes of chopping carrots. And it's easier for them to eat with like hummus or guacamole or whatever. So that's sort of a, something that I will spend a couple extra dollars on to get the pre-cut carrots. Cause it's just easier and they like them. Um, but for me, I guess it, I, I look at it as this is an investment in their health that it's worth it. So if that means I'm not on, you know, my phone for 15 minutes, I'm just going to really quick knock out these two lunches and stick them in the fridge, then it's worth it. It just is worth it for me to do that. Um, I also find it, you know, it's not expensive. Um, sometimes their, their lunches are leftovers. So whatever that dinner is, chickpea salad, spaghetti, maybe we made a pot pie, you know, whatever it is. Oh, look, the leftovers are now your lunch for tomorrow. And as long as they're bringing back empty lunch boxes and they're not coming home starving and you know, they're actually eating the food you're sending, then it's all a win. Um, I also don't shy away from sending them, to, you know, sometimes my oldest, like I said, raw vegan, he will eat just a plate of cut up fruits and vegetables. And so I, sometimes I'll send him that in his school lunch. And I think we have this idea in our head that you need a sandwich and you need chips and you need a cheese stick or, or otherwise it's an incomplete meal. And that's just simply not the case. So my two tips are don't stress out about dinner, cook what you know your family is going to eat. Don't force them to eat something that you just know is going to turn into a battle. And don't worry if what your, if your plate does not look like the traditional plate. It doesn't have to, um, as long as your kids are starving, they're, you know, they're obviously like filled up and ready to go. Um, then you're good. And I was thinking as you were talking, Robin, growing up, I think I ate peanut butter and jelly almost every day of the week right. for school. It's like accidentally vegan too, but and I kind of <laughs> want to add to that. I think, um, I think an underlying theme of some of my, my answers here is just that like a lot of it's our own personal worry or stress. Um, you know, there is something to be said for, you know, choosing to feed your kids differently than what the majority of people do and worrying that someone's going to judge you or make a comment and you're going to feel on the spot or that you need to defend your choice. And I completely understand that. And I have felt it too, but I think just knowing your kids are happy, they're eating the food you're serving them. And just knowing that the food you're serving them are those healthier options. There's peanut butter and jelly is a very healthy option. Checks off a lot of boxes. I for sure, same thing. I'm going to bet, you know, junior high was three years of PB and J's for sure. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, like don't worry about that stuff as much. You know? Are there tools and resources, either products? I know we've talked about like the guardian chicken sliders and some of the easy go-tos, but are there specific products, whether they're food or like websites as resources? And you mentioned some of the books you like Robin, but some like favorite go-to things that have really helped you either in the beginning or even now today. And Kate, I'll turn that over to you. Um, I really like the Forks Over Knives website. And there's also another website called 
connoisseur's veg that has some really wonderful, very easy uh, recipes that I like to go to. And I'm just sort of feeling like I need something, need to snazz it up a little bit. I need to throw something new in the mix. <laughs> um, I can go on there and and uh, they have everything laid out pretty, pretty straightforward. So I'm definitely a big internet recipe junkie. <laughs> Uh, but those are my two biggies. I just got the most recent Forks Over Knives magazine, which I'm like, you know, at first I'm like $12. This is the best $12 I've spent on a magazine in a long time. <laughs> so. The Forks Over Knives cookbook is definitely one of my favorites. Um, and I love their magazine as well. It's like my one grocery store checkout line splurge. I'm like, we'll put you on there because it's just that and the Thrive magazine. I like a lot too. I mean, they are really pretty. They're like present day cosmopolitan mm -hmm. magazine for us now, I guess. Um, but you know, I gotta say, it's not so much about the recipes or, um, you know, sort of the, the outcome of things. I think for me, the biggest thing that I try to do is I keep it really simple because from my, I don't know, perspective opinion, like I want my kids to really learn and like the flavor of like basic fruits and vegetables. So often, no matter what I make, there's always a side of like steamed broccoli or just plain brown rice, plain corn, something like just as it is. Um, I want them to like those flavors and to want those flavors. And of course, it's always great when you can jazz it up and throw on like a sauce or some great spice mixture. And, and we do that too. But I would say the bulk of our meals during the week are, are really basic. And people probably think we're real boring. Um, but yeah, just, just cause I think, um, at least just from like my understanding of our taste buds and how we learn foods, it's, I want to just kind of create like a real solid foundation with them that they really just appreciate whole foods as they are. And the dates that you make are such a great example of how you can take these whole foods. Cause if you get the all natural peanut butter or almond butter or any sort of nut or seed butter, cut a date in half and fill it. And I know you sprinkle raisins and cinnamon on top. I mean, everything you can just back to that earlier point of being able to describe where every one of those things comes from mm -hmm. and those things are addictive they're delicious it's the and cinnamon i'm gonna tell you it is so <laughs> the cinnamon on top cinnamon's like my sister actually joked she helped me clean out my spice cabinet before i moved <laughs> it was like four opened cinnamon containers and i was like oh i have a problem <laughs> but 